As soon as I walked this property for the first time, I'm like, yes. I'm like, we've got to have it. We've got to own it. I mean, I want to hold this for a long time, 10, 15, 20 years. All right, guys, so it is Saturday morning and we're gonna go look at real estate and by popular demand, everyone wants to know kind of the numbers and the business plan of my first apartment I ever bought, which was a seven unit that was actually on the MLS. It was the only apartment I've ever bought on market. Everything else I've purchased off market. How I bought it for 660,000 and then within not even two years later, made it worth a million bucks. We did 100% cash out refi. If you stick with me to the very end, I'll show you the exact numbers on it and how much money we make monthly in cash flow from owning this property, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go there, I'm gonna walk you through the business plan, we'll show you like exactly how we spent money, how we improved it, talk to you a little bit more about the property and be able to really show it to you. So without any further ado, let's go hop in the car, let's go to the property. All right, guys, so we're here at the property and a big question I always get asked is like, hey, Tony, how do you know a piece of real estate is a good investment? And like I said, at the end of this video, we're gonna walk through the numbers. So make sure you stick with us to the very end. We'll go through the exact numbers on this property, but location, location, location with real estate. When this property hit the MLS, and this is why too, I'm a big fan of buying in your backyard, buying in the state you're from. So I'm from Michigan, right? This is about 45 minutes from our house. I used to actually live right up here, maybe 15 minutes away. So I knew the area very well. As soon as it hit the MLS, I drove out there because I knew the area. But I got super excited when I saw my neighbors. Check, check out my neighbors here. Check that house out. Location is everything in real estate, okay? I knew this area, but you don't build a house like that unless there's money in the area. And, and the biggest thing we've learned with like real estate is location matters. Okay, you can change paint, you can change fixtures, you can change anything aesthetically about the property, but you can't change the location. So that's number one. The one thing I don't like about this property, the city, we wanted to put a sign up. They said it would cost like fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 for a sign because it had to be a special sign. As soon as I drove by this property for the first time, I knew it was good. I'm like, I had to have this. I had to buy this, okay? There was like a three, four-way bidding war on this because this was back during the pandemic. So things were going. It got listed for five fifty. dollars I paid $660,000 thousand for it. So I overpaid. I overpaid. But what did I just say? This property's worth over a million dollars today. It just appraised for a million dollars like two, three months ago. And we've even made it even better since then. So my best advice to you, know the area, know the property, get a gut feeling. The old Grand Cardone wisdom, like Grand Cardone said, I always get a gut feeling when I'm at a property of a yay or nay. As soon as I walked this property for the first time, I'm like, yes. I'm like, we've got to have it. We've got to own it. I mean, I want to hold this for a long time, 10, 15, 20 years, right? So let's walk you through. Let me show you some of the things I liked about it, some of the things we've spent money on, okay? So when we bought it for 660, we immediately looked at things to fix, okay? So let me walk you around. One of the big things that was an issue with the property, they had some deferred maintenance, like landscaping, we cleaned up. So we, we fixed a lot of the landscaping, but like, I've learned too with apartments, they're very visual. Like when, when someone comes to potentially rent at it and, and wants to live here, does it feel like a safe, clean community? So like big thing we did is we did fresh paint. We did fresh paint all on the trim, on the doors, and just kind of made the community, you know, feel nice, feel refreshed. But I want to show you too what I thought was a huge advantage of this. We'll talk about it back here, is this barn. So something strategically that I really liked with this apartment, something I'm always looking at, how can I add value to the property? I would not ever invest in a property if I didn't know I could add value. So that's something you're really important that you're looking for when you're looking at apartment buildings. Is it in a good area? Does the area support it? Like, are people moving into that area? Do people want to live in that area? Is it a good area? Is crime low, right? That's something I look at. Is crime low or is crime high? If crime's high, I don't want to invest there. Are there good school systems? Are there hospitals? Are there big like, you know, employment things in there? Like the, the apartment we're buying uh, that we're under contract to buy right now, it's by a military base, it's by a GM, like General Motors, big tech center. So there's like jobs right within that vicinity. So that's huge. But most importantly, can I add value to it? Can I make it nicer, newer, upgrader? Or is there or is there hidden ways to make money that the other owner isn't taking advantage of? What do I mean by that? See, 
Joe, I don't know who Joe is, but Joe's barn back there, it was just sitting vacant. The owner was using it to store some supplies in there, refrigerators, whatever. We cleared it all out. We rented the barn out to somebody who stores something in there. I don't know, we can't go in it because they technically lent it, rent it out as like a, a lease space. But that generates income for the property. 175 bucks a month, 175 dollars. Let's do, do, let's do this together. Let's show you how this works, okay? We got $175 per month in this barn that wasn't doing anything before. 175 per month multiplied by 12 months per year. That's $2,100. This apartment just got appraised at a six cap. So 6% cap rate. So we divide the total amount, $2,100 divided by 0 0.06, $35,000 in valuation increase. So just by renting this barn out, it makes the property worth $35,000 more. So how you get to that, that's what we call like the magic formula. That's how apartments are valued. That's how you know how much value you're gonna increase and create. $1 divided by the cap rate equals how much in valuation you'll increase. So I know for every dollar I can either increase the income from this property, or if I reduce the expense, right? If I can reduce the expense a dollar, I'm creating $16.66 in valuation. So again, just doing that very simply, a dollar divided by the cap rate, 0.066%, right? 0.06, $16. When you buy an apartment, you are meticulously looking at that NOI. This is my job. See, my wife runs the operations. I run the NOI. I say, how can I decrease the expenses? or how can I increase the income? Because little changes make huge impact. So that's what you're looking for. Other things we look for are really high utility bills. We know we can get those utility bills down a little bit. Low flow toilets. One of our other properties, there was a water softener company because it was on a well. My wife was able to shop that out and reduce the bill by half, saving us $5,000 per year. You, you would ask like, well, why would the other owner pay more? Cause they just, they get lazy. They get complacent or they're like, hey, I've never looked at it. So I love investing in apartments because it's a business. Like when I took this over, rents were at like $700. That's so cheap for this area. Market rents like 1100 bucks. Once we've upgraded and improved the units, you're like, okay, that's a way to make more money. If you're like, wow, they're not renting out the space here. I can make money with that. Wow, they're paying a lot in utilities. I can make money with that. That's how you build your wealth with apartment investing. There's not a clear cut answer. So cap rate just means your return on investment if you own the property in cash. So if I own the property in all cash, it's estimated that I would make 6% on my money. The number one way to get it, the ultimate way to get it is the appraisal. The appraiser is gonna come in and look at the market, look at the economy, look at all these factors and set a cap rate. You can do your own research. We use a, a tool, a professional tool called CoStar. They do run a lot of marketing, a lot of data. It's very expensive to use, it's like 500 bucks per month to do it. You can Google it, you can talk to brokers and you can get an opinion opinion on the cap rate, they should be able to have like a rough opinion. Like, so if you talk to a good broker, if you were looking to buy this, say I was selling this, right? And a broker listed it. You should be able to call the broker and say, what's the cap rate for the area? And they'd say, you know, it's about a 5.75 to 6.25 cap. So you know, then you take the NOI, whatever the NOI is, and this is a trick to know how much it's valued. NOI divided by that cap rate gives you the valuation. Because sometimes when brokers list things for sale, they'll give you the NOI and they'll give you the cap rate and they won't give you the price. And a newbie will say, well, how much does it cost? They expect you to know that. They expect you to know if I give you the NOI, the gross profit, you need to divide that by the cap rate, that gives you the price. The answer is, it depends. You should be able to get a rough estimate based on the broker or based on your own market research. I mean, you can probably go on Google and Google cap rates of you know the area, but the appraiser is the ultimate one to set the final cap rate. So that's how we know it just appraised using a six cap. So what we did here, uh, some upgrades, we did the flooring. We're talking about doing the kitchen here. So the kitchen is a little outdated. So we were just discussing if we should, this would be the first kitchen we're doing in this apartment. So maybe just the countertops and painting the cabinets would be a nice upgrade. So we did the floors already. Uh, we painted the doors. So these doors used to be like a dark brown. So we painted that to do a nice upgrade. We kept to the bathroom the same. It's that blue color. I like it. Add some character. Um, and then we just did new carpet in here. So we did new carpet, again, painted the doors. Didn't need too much uh, to get it rented back out. But that's what we did in the apartment here to turn it. You, you can always do more later. The goal is, so like we invest in like, class C plus B minus areas. This isn't like the Taj Mahal, right? I said in the first place I rented, you know, but you have to upgrade to the standard of the area. 
okay? So, because people ask, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you put granite countertops in? Why didn't you? Because the area doesn't, this property doesn't command those type of upgrades. So you don't want to over improve it because then you're not going to get your ROI back. You really have to know the comparables of the area and the type of property. And that's why it's so important. You have to be boots on the ground and walk and know your properties. Like no one in this price range gets granted and gets stainless steel uh, wolf red knob appliances, you know? So that's where we've seen people get in trouble. Like the one property I bought, he over improved right. it. Yeah. He over improved it and under managed it. Great for me because right, we got to come in and get granite and backsplash and all that, but gotta know the area. Okay, so this we did beginning of spring. So right when they were able to paint and power wash. So first they power washed all the gutters. The gutters are a steel gutter. Instead of replacing all the gutters, they were all chipped paint. The previous owner used interior paint. Don't do that on the exterior of your building. So all the paint was chipped off. So we painted that, we put gutter guards on. This one is a little further for us. So our maintenance team is in the Troy area. We're in Novi. So this is just more preventative too, so that they can just come by once a year, once, twice a year and get it all off the gutter guards. And then instead of cleaning out the gutters, each year so we did that we also did the barn and some rotted wood so there's some wood on the front and the barn over there that was rotting so this is just to maintain the building um, make sure that it stays in the good condition that we want it to stay in painted and replaced rotted wood we did some landscape too yeah we did a good spring cleanup uh, we did the bushes things like that just things that weren't being done before so one thing uh, we got a lot of really nice messages from our residents which is awesome to see you know they were saying that it wasn't being maintained and they weren't liking the exterior. They're all really happy to see uh, the exterior being taken care of, which we love seeing. So we got a lot of nice messages once the landscape was being taken care of, once the exterior was being painted, especially the woman at the end that lives by the barn. She's really happy to see that all taken care of. All right, guys, so we're wrapping up here at the property. Hopefully I shared some of the things that I look for in a property. I gave you some tactical things. My wife showed you through from the operation side of things. It matters, right? It's not just buying and finding a good deal, it's operating. Operations. operations is how you make your money. And that's what we've really learned from self-managing. Now what I want to do is I go back to my office. Let's talk about the cash flow. It's all about the cash flow. Let's go run the numbers and show you exactly how much money this property makes every single month. But hey, before we do that, if you enjoyed the content, let us know. Leave us a comment below. Guys, we are out here working on a Saturday to show you the stuff. Nick's sweating. I'm sweating. My wife's sweating. Oh, she, she sparkles. She doesn't sweat, right? If you enjoy it, hit the thumbs up. Leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if this was helpful, please share the video with one friend. It's all we ask, okay? Help us grow the channel. Help us grow the message. Share the channel. With that being said, let's go run the numbers. Okay, guys. So now let's get into the numbers of the property. And I've got my Excel spreadsheet pulled up here. One thing I really want to stress to you is real estate can be variable. Expenses can change. Okay, so I'm going to run through what our estimated monthly cash flow is from this property. Now, some months it's more, some months it's less. So be aware of that. When you are running the numbers for yourself, be aware it can be variable. This is an estimate at best. So those seven units plus the barn brings in a total of $8,475 per month in rental income, okay? Everything I'm gonna say to you is monthly, okay? Monthly income and expenses. Now, is all that profit? Of course not. Of course not. So my first line item, the first thing when you're calculating your cash flow on a rental property is my principal, my interest, my taxes, and my insurance payment. So we pay $5,710.61 monthly for principal and interest, which is the mortgage payment, property tax, and insurance. Now, when I first bought this property, my principal and interest was much lower. But like I said, we just did a cash out refi. So when you do a cash out refi, the new loan amount gets tacked on there. So we're paying a little bit more, but as I mentioned earlier, I was able to take $250,000 out of this property. I only put 132,000 down, give or take 130,000 plus some fees, whatever. So I have no money in this deal. Okay, so that's why my principal and interest payments a little bit higher, because we've already refied it. So then when we look at property management, property management could be a fee, we don't pay that because we self-manage, okay? So that's a huge benefit. We estimate about $500 in maintenance every single month. Now again, some months it's much lower than that because we really take care of the property and we fix a lot of the issues. Some months it's higher. So you just kind of have to know your property. I've heard a good rule of thumb is anywhere from like 10% of gross rental income to maybe 5% of gross rental income for expenses. It depends on the property. That's why there's no like general rule of thumb. It just depends on the property. So we've seen historically now that we've owned it, about $500 is what we estimate for monthly maintenance, okay? When we look at the utility bills, and this is again, 
Every property is a little different. Every property is a little bit different. Do you pay all the utilities? Are they sub metered? Do the tenants pay the utilities? Is there common area utilities? These are things you have to learn when you're evaluating a property. We spend about $422 and some change per month on utilities. Again, could be higher. The main, our main utility expense there is water. Waters can be very expensive. So those are things just to be aware of. Now vacancy, we estimate $169 per month in vacancy. Okay, this property is historically always filled. Okay, we always have good tenants coming in there. Uh, we usually keep our vacancy pretty low, but I just estimate that again, based on the historicals. This is the big thing I wanna stress before I get to the monthly cash flow. It's very different for me because I own a portfolio and I don't take the money out of the portfolio, okay? So like when this cash flow comes in every single month, I don't take it, I don't go spend it. So like something I, I don't put on here is reserves. Usually historically in like a rule of thumb, when you are underwriting and evaluating real estate, it's like $250 per unit in reserves per year. I keep all the cash flow for as long as I can in the property's operating account. Every single property we have has its own operating account, has its own bank account, essentially where the income goes into and the expenses are paid out of. So if you were trying, again, the big difference that's allowed us to scale so much is we keep the money in the business, right? Each property is a business. We don't take it out. This is where if you're like, well, I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to try to live off of this income, you have to evaluate it much differently. I can evaluate it a bit looser, I guess you could say, because I'm not even, I'm pretending this cash flow isn't even there. So when you take, I hope that kind of explains, because I know someone's going to be like, well, you didn't put in for cash. CapEx, you put in reserve because everything that this generates monthly, I keep as a reserve. So I don't then do an additional reserve or a CapEx reserve. So again, real world application versus theory, right? We own 87 units. This is what works for us. You have to figure out what works for you because I'm not trying to live off the cash flow of my properties. That's why I have another business for it. So when you take our monthly income minus our monthly expenses, this property generates an estimated $1,732.11 in monthly cash flow or an annual cash flow of $20,785. What's my return on investment? Infinite, because I have no money in this deal. When I purchased the property for 660,000, we put 132,000 down, we put 20% down. We improved the NOI, we grew the property's income, we reduced its expenses, we made the property more valuable. It appraised for a million dollars. I was able to take out $250,000 tax-free because it's debt. Someone asked too, did your rate change when you did that? I was able to structure a really cool scenario where they allowed me to keep my original debt in place because I had a 3.9% interest rate on that. It's very hard to get nowadays. And then just the new line of equity, which was 250,000, I took like a 6% rate on. So I still have the majority of my loan at 3.9%, which is really cool. But this is the game, guys. This is how it's done. You buy good property, you fix it up, you improve it, you get your money out. That is a total infinite return. Like if I gave you a seven unit property and for no money and it made you an estimated 1700, now like I said, some months might be 900, other months might be 2500. It just depends on the expenses, right? Like if three washer dryers break, I mean, that cash flow is gone for that month. It's just, that's how it works, but it's infinite return. That's the game. So guys, hey, if you enjoyed this content, if you enjoyed this video, let us know, hit the thumbs up. If you have any questions about anything I talked about, again, I'm not a guru. I'm not selling you a course here. I'm showing you my real life, my wife and I's real life and how we do it. You need to figure out how you are going to do it, okay? I'm teaching you from my experience. If I didn't have another business, maybe I would look at things differently, but I'm not trying, these are investments to me. I'm not trying to go live off of this cash flow. I'm trying to reinvest, reinvest. I'm trying to be cash poor, asset rich at this phase of my life. Trying to constantly take any money I make from my business and reinvest. That's what I wanna recommend for you to do. If you enjoy this, let, it, let me know, leave a comment, hit the thumbs up, be sure to subscribe. Share this video with a friend. Okay, again, if you have any questions, let me know. Leave a comment below. If you want to learn more about this, how we do this, we have two free gifts for you. Number one, I have an entire masterclass where I walk through this in depth. People pay $2,000 to be there and sit in on that. We did it in California. It's yours for free. Click the link below. You get the digital download or my book. My book is The New Rules to Financial Freedom. It's how I grew my earned income in my business. And then took my earned income and invested into portfolio and passive income here in cash flow producing real estate. It sells for 19 bucks on Amazon. Click the link below to get it. Until next time, if you enjoyed, let us know, leave a comment. We'll talk soon. Thanks.